What's up YouTube, Praminthor here. This is going to be a very short video about the top 5 things I don't like about Diablo 4 after playing the beta, top 5 things I do like about Diablo 4 and why I think you should play it, and some things I would like to suggest. Hopefully the development uh, does hear this, or maybe this would drive a conversation. Either way, let's go right into it, and thank you very much for clicking on this video. Currently Act 1, I don't like the map design, I feel like the map design is a bit meh, I was hoping for something more Diablo 2-esque with some blockades along the way, but basically more open fields, more mobs can come from any direction kind of thing, and less small pathways that lead to mobs, I don't, I didn't feel like that was very interesting overall. This is a personal opinion, in my opinion the Barbarian feels like absolute dog water, the sorceress feels like there was no innovation on her or him um, since Diablo 2. There is a bit of like Diablo 2, Diablo 3 esque on the sorceress, but honestly, it's just a good graphic Diablo 2 sorceress. Now, what I would say is that it does have a very familiar vibe to a Diablo 2 or Diablo 3 sorceress, and I feel like that might be the reason the, the devs want you to have. A character that you can already relate to from the previous expansions but personally i don't like it as a whole i was hoping for more innovation but it, it's also understandable why i mean how much can you innovate on a sorceress really number three dodge for all the classes feel the same they actually are the same what i was hoping to see with the dodge mechanic is that every class is going to have their own dodge mechanic for example the sorceress instead of having a blink ability you could have had the dodge as the blink which would add it you won't be able to just spam it like you can win pretty much every diablo game well a bit less than diablo 3. right so and for the rogue it would be the dash ability where you dash through a target and slash or you can just dash away for the Barbarian, either the Lunge or just a Leap ability, that would be the Dodge ability. I don't think there's any reason not to. It would also diversify the classes and give them a bit more identity. Just literally just the Dodge, the dodge mechanic. And you can play on passives for the Dodge mechanic as well, which would be even more interesting. Number four, abilities felt rather empty okay so the thing is obviously i don't know how the end game is like how the paragon system is going to impact uh the abilities but as far as the talents go a lot of them were kind of like meh there's also a lot of bad interactions like some of your ranged abilities require you they will do special things on a vulnerable target but to get vulnerable vulnerable targets on your ranged ability reliably is really really poorly designed it's like a single single target spell so like maybe you'll get one target vulnerable but if you miss the third shot and you hit nothing or your third shot killed an enemy then there's no vulnerable target again a lot of just bad feeling interaction interactions hopefully obviously legendaries fix this and they will be like oh this ability now also adds vulnerability and stuff like that but i feel like when the legendaries really have to come in and fix these like minor issues i don't think that's a very good design this makes the game feel like your class again is empty until you get something and that never felt good this is from world of warcraft by the way also felt really bad that you felt like your class was empty until you got the external power systems i don't feel like that's a really good system i feel like you should have a solid base and built upon that base not a broken base and then a fixed base and then you build upon that I just don't feel like that is a very good design overall and it can really feel like night and day in the end game and it would turn to another Diablo 3 Fiesta with like you know 400% increase in damage or whatever for 40,000% increase in damage sorry and the last one and this is a very personal one this game does not feel like a Diablo game. Now, what do I mean by that? It doesn't say that mean that it's a bad game or anything like that. It doesn't feel like a Diablo game. It is... Everything is too bright. There's no sense of danger. 
there's no real darkness there's nothing creeping on you from like from a corner everything feels super safe aside from like you know like yeah okay some mobs do deal a lot of damage yes i get that but overall it just doesn't feel a lot like a diablo game in that regard everything is too bright everything is too linear there are no puzzles to solve there are no actual like back and forth there's no like you go into a room and it's an ambush but again this is all act one but uh, the sense of danger is just not there imagine you had like a dungeon you go into obviously it's not linear it's not circular you go into a room that looks like a treasure room it it locks up and then a bunch of mobs appear and shit like that right so it's like you don't have any of that as far as i've seen in act one i feel like that is a missed opportunity and that's why in my opinion this doesn't really feel like a diablo game I, what i expect from diablo game is more like especially when you do dungeons indiana jones type of vibe like should be very scary you know i mean we are adults and it's an arpg it's not gonna be that scary but it should be a lot darker it should be something might jump on you from an unknown location there should be ambushes by monsters and traps and things like that and so far it didn't feel like it yes there are like mini traps that uh, happen but it's like that's not really a trap it's a very visible spike basically all right let's move on to the good stuff obviously number one by far is blizzard quality gameplay the combat is super smooth the sounds are fantastic everything like in the feel of the game is great the abilities feel like they are doing the damage very impactful every ability makes sense in its animation and in the sounds overall 10 out of 10 easy just for gameplay number two variety of activity i think that there's a lot of activity that you can do be it world events world bosses uh renowned things uh special locations that you don't really need to go to and it's not even an event but it's kind of like you investigate the place and then you find out that there's like warts here or whatever you kill the ones and there's like a very hard boss i'm talking about like the place in the north that was like insane and I would never have like a world event says that there's an event there i just went and explored it the dungeons and end game you were supposed to have also rifts and like other challenges and stuff like that so in terms of variety if you're a completionist i feel like this game has a lot to offer i'm not even talking about like how many legendaries there probably are in the game because we've only saw probably a handful uh build variety is there to an extent and depends on how many legendaries really so it's like if you want to build to work you need the legendaries for it if there are no legendaries for it you don't you cannot make that build uh but other than that a great 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 variety overall number three the story in my opinion is fantastic in at least for arpg standards and honestly even better than some mmorpgs out there okay the story is good it's really engaging it's it does keep you a bit of mystery it tells you everything you need to know but not everything that there is to know right it's like you don't know why th certain things happen why this guy had to do this i'm not i don't want to go into spoilers but i would say like this if you just want a good story diablo 4 so far looks like it would provide it especially if you're interested in the diablo universe i'm sure a lot of answers regarding sanctuary sanctuary hell and heaven are gonna be answered and hopefully the story continues to be just as good and even better number four gold is expensive again what does that mean you know like all oh, repair bills are crazy no repair bills honestly it's like you almost never have to repair really unless you're maybe like melee but as a rogue i every time i try to repair i was like oh i don't need to repair but um upgrading gear because you can upgrade your gear now at the blacksmith costs a lot of money Taking out legendary aspects from the legendary items costs a good chunk of money. Putting those legendary aspects onto gear, onto your rare items costs a good chunk of money. Okay. Um, chain, I don't even know how much it costs to like change, um, change a thing, like a, an attribute on your item is, but I'm going to assume it's probably expensive. 
Either way, hopefully this doesn't bring about gold farmers. I don't even know if you can trade gold and didn't try. But gold is relevant. It's not just like an endless bit of money that's like, oh, well, I don't have gold. I'm going to go do this thing real quick and I'll have another gazillion bazillion money in, in the bank. Okay, gold is actually like has value now. And uh, last but not least, trade is back on the menu. Right now, as far as the theories go, rare items are going to be the best in slot because they're going to have the same amount of attributes as a legendary, but you can put a legendary on top of it. So technically the rares would have one attribute more than legendary. Therefore, rare items are going to be the most expensive items and the most sought off after items and the rare items are tradable so we have trade back similar to diablo 2 or maybe even more complex than that <coughs> let's go into things i want to see in diablo 4 or basically suggestions or things i need i think the game really needs to add when i heard that the barbarian is gonna have an arsenal of weapons in my mind i had the thought that they innovated on the Diablo 2 weapon swap, which basically makes it so like it said the Barbarian has three arsenals. So it has like the two-handed smashing, two-handed slashing, and one-handed, uh, two one-handed weapons. So I, what I was hoping for, maybe instead of like having the six abilities that you can use, a Barbarian would have four abilities for each weapon, and then he would be able to swap between each weapon and each weapon would have its own loadout of the barbarian's choice i felt like that would add a lot more to the gameplay of the barbarian or again if you want to do six abilities for each weapon that's fine but either way the whole point was swapping weapons swaps the loadout and then you can do more things with your build and be more adaptable to the situation i felt like that's what it was similar to the rogue the rogue has daggers and a bow if you're going for a daggers build your bow is a stat stick and vice versa I don't think that's a great thing, a great mechanic overall. It feels a bit lazy. What I would have wanted to see is a rogue would have a melee ability, or for example, his melee would be the single target, his range would be the AoE. So for example, you go into a dungeon, bunch of monsters, whatever, you AoE them down from range, and then when there's one target, you jump in and you start battling him as a rogue, right? Like in melee, hopefully, this may be implemented on but honestly at this point i really doubt it because it feels like that would be too much for to change anytime soon but that's what i was hoping for when i, I heard um arsenal of weapons another suggestion i would like to make and i think everyone will probably agree with this d4 definitely needs a loadout for an armory similar to d3 the builds are too are very cheap basically non-existent cost they're free to change the build but what if you want to test something out and you want to remember the build you were using before or like you don't want to manually swap back to your old build what if you have multiple builds for multiple purposes world content and speed uh dungeon grinding or rift pushing anything like that so i don't i don't see why there wouldn't be a loadout i feel like there probably will be and they just didn't add it in the beta it's just such an obvious thing especially with how the game is designed for talent swapping what I would like to see as well, this is like as a progression system, as a, as content and as something you can do in dungeons as well, more puzzles and more mazes. Doing an event of like a puzzle, like literally a maze, having an event that has like secret doors, like you get a hint and then if you chose the wrong one that, and you go into the wrong room, you're gonna get a bunch of monsters attacking you and things like that. So I would like to see more puzzles and mazes. Puzzles and mazes overall are great. Makes you feel like a sense of accomplishment. Even if it's the easiest puzzle. Like literally having like the smallest math problem in a dungeon. That would keep the players a lot more engaged and having a bit more fun. And obviously there needs to be randomization. But for the most part, I feel like the game is really lacking it. Especially as a Diablo game that, for example, Diablo 2 had a bunch of mazes in a sense based on the map you were in and Diablo 1 had some mini puzzles to solve with its weird items and stuff like that. 
And also this one is a probably small one. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the butcher ambushing people in dungeons and basically massacring them. And that's like the funniest way for people to die at this point. Honestly, one of the only ways for people to die. However, I feel like the butcher doesn't have enough of a presence when he spawns, especially if he spawns or if he's there where around a bunch of mobs, he's not stand, he doesn't stand out too much. I feel like the first time the butcher sees you, he should make a certain animation. There should be definitely a bigger sound effect. Like, you know, right now, I think he says fresh meat. I didn't even notice if he says anything, to be honest, but definitely needs to be like a much stronger presence to him just appearing there because you need to know the butcher is there you are fucked you're royally fucked you need to get the fuck out of there especially if you're hardcore right it is a good thing that the butcher disappears after he kills you but if you're hardcore once it doesn't matter if he if he disappears or not you're dead right uh so and also like yeah he definitely needs a bit of nerfing because he's way too way too hard right now for the average player and honestly, for even high tier players, unless they're overgeared, dodging his abilities is extremely hard. He has smart aiming, it looks like, to an extent. And his charges are pretty much instantaneous and there's like almost no animation indication. Alright guys, this is it for the video. If you liked, please leave a like. If you liked it enough to subscribe, please subscribe. And if you have something to say to add to say that I am wrong about something, please feel free to leave a comment and I always read them and I try to reply to basically every comment. I'm still replying to comments that people write on videos I made four months ago. So I'm trying to be very active with that and I love having a good conversation, especially when you disagree with me. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for spending your time here and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.